Hi everyone. We are getting close to the end of the course, and our last major topic is multi-group comparisons in SEM. When the sample from a single population is used in SEM, the focus usually is on whether the model parameters are significant. In other words, whether they differ significantly from zero. Although it's feasible to test equality between parameters in a single model, it's not common practice unless the equality constraint is supported by theoretical evidence or empirical hypothesis. Actually, we learned how to set equality constraints back in week six in a model about exercise behaviors measured at two different times. Oftentimes, we are interested in making comparisons between different populations. For example, a researcher might want to know whether a number of factors that impact students' math performance function in the same way for both boys and girls. When the research interest is about comparing parameters between populations, we need to do multi-group SEM. I'm going to use three examples to show you how to do a multi-group pass analysis (CFA) and latent factor model, respectively. Regardless of the model type, we follow the same strategies. First, we need to test whether the proposed model is tenable for each group. In this step, we simply test the model fit for individual groups, and when needed. Make justified modifications one group at a time. Second, we put the groups together and test model tenability for all groups simultaneously. In this step, we test two models. We start with an unconstrained model, in which model parameters are estimated separately for each group. But the model fit indices are estimated for all groups together. Then we test the constraint model, in which model parameters of interest are set to be equal across groups, and the overall model fit indices are estimated. In the last step, we compare the model fit, in particular. Model chi-score values to see if there is a significant difference between the constraint and the unconstrained models. If there is no significant difference between the constraint and the unconstrained models, we conclude that the model structure fits all groups equally well, and there's no difference in the model parameters between the populations from which the samples were taken. However, if there is a significant difference between the constraint model and the unconstrained model, we need to test the model parameters of interest one at a time to see which parameters function differently across groups. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the multi-group comparison using a pass model. In this model, there are four exogenous variables: reading, history, math, and science self-concepts, and they have impacts on two endogenous variables: goal orientation and the SAT math score. The research objective is to see whether this model explains the math performance of girls and boys equally well, and identifies gender differences in the structural relations, if there are any. The covariance matrices are available for boys and girls separately, so you can prepare summary data files in M+. This is the data file for girls. This is the data file for boys. In the command file, I would like you to pay attention to the two lines here. I'm setting the relations between history self-concept and math and science concept to zero, because in the hypothesized model, they are not related. 
But in M plus, by default, all exogenous variables are correlated unless specified otherwise. I first ran this model using the data of girls. But the diagram shows that there's only one correlation between the exogenous variables. I think there's a bug with the M plus program. So I come back to my command file, add relations between the exogenous variables and make sure they are related as specified in the model. Save the changes and rerun the analysis. This time the diagram looks right. I show you this extra step just to remind you that we always need to make sure that the model structure looks right before we proceed with the analysis. The fit indices look good for girls. And now let's run the same model for boys. In the output file, we can see that the fit indices in most cases are good, even though the model chi-score value could be better. However, none of the modification indices proposed in the output file are conceptually acceptable, so I decide not to make any changes. Checking the model parameters, the pass coefficient from reading self-concept to SAT math appear to be different for girls and boys. This pass coefficient is not significant for girls but is statistically significant and negative for boys. Also, the path from history self-concept to SAT math seems to have different strengths for girls and boys. In step two, it's time to put the two groups together and test the model fits. Since we are using summary data, we need to create a data file that consists of information from all groups with data of group 1 going first, and then the data of group 2. In the command file, first we need to make it clear in the data section that there are two groups using n groups equals 2, and make it clear that the first group is girls and the second group is boys. There are two numbers for the sample sizes. The first one is for group one, the second number is for group two. In the analysis section, remember to specify that the type is M group, meaning multi group. In this unconstrained model, we repeat the same model structure as we had for individual groups. Once we run the analysis, you will see in the output file the confirmation that there are two groups with a total sample size of 2,000. The model fit indices are provided for all groups together. Nonetheless, you can see the contribution to the total model chi-score from individual groups. The chi-score value is lower for girls, suggesting that the model fits girls' data better which is consistent with what we found in the analysis of individual groups. The overall model fit indices look fine, even though the model chi-score is statistically significant. Here is a summary of the model fit information for the girls group only, boys group only, and when they put together in an unconstrained model, you can see the model chi-score of the total sample is a sum of the chi-score for girls and the chi-score for boys. Moving on to the next section in the output file, you can see the model parameters are estimated separately for individual groups. Here is group one, here you have group two. The model parameters have the same values as they were estimated in the individual groups. The modification indices are also provided by groups. Now it's time to do a constraint model in which all model parameters of interest are set to be the same across groups. To do so in my command file for each pass coefficient to be estimated, I need to add a number 
in parentheses right after the exogenous variable name. Because I have eight structural paths, I gave each of them a unique number. The numbers indicate that the corresponding pass coefficients are set to be equal between the two groups. We do not need to do this for the correlations covariances between the exogenous variables because they are considered unanalyzed and not part of the research interest. The model fit indices look fine in the output file, except for the significant chi-score value. With both the unconstrained and constrained models being acceptable, we now are ready to compare their model chi-score values. The difference between them is 12.23 with a degree freedom of 8. The critical chi-score value when the degree freedom is 8 is 15.51. Because the chi-score difference is lower than the critical value, we can conclude that there is no significant difference in the model fit between the unconstrained and the constraint models, and the same model structure fits boys and girls equally well. For this particular example, we could just stop the analysis right here. However, if you would like to explore further, or if there was a significant difference in the chi-score values of the unconstrained and the constraint models, we need to move on to step three. In step three, we test the differences between corresponding parameters. A common strategy is to begin with the constraint model, look at the modification indices in the output file to estimate the benefit of releasing each individual equality constraint, and decide on what change to make. In our example, the model modification indices for both group one and group two suggest release the equality constraint on the path from math self-concept to SAT math. We can release the constraint in the command file by removing the number and the parentheses following the path relation. Save the change and run the analysis. Check the output file. If there are more changes to be adopted, we can release additional constraints one at a time each time assessing the statistical significance of the largest change in fit. In our example, the model chi-score is reduced, and there's no other modification seems necessary or acceptable. This is the model fit indices for the final model, and we have completed all three steps for this multi-group comparison path analysis. When the analysis is complete, model parameters with released constraints are inferred to be different across populations. Parameters with remaining constraints have tenable equality. In this example, the only released constraint is from mass self-concept to SAT mass. Based on the values of the pass coefficients, we can conclude that the impact on SAT math scores from math self-concept is stronger for boys. The higher their self-concept on math, the higher their SAT math scores. Although the same relation is observed for girls, the magnitude of the impact is significantly weaker. A different strategy can be used in step 3 in which you start with the unconstrained model and constrain each interesting parameter to be equal across groups, one at a time. Your choice of parameters to be constrained is guided more by research interest than statistical information. But whether to include a constraint in the final model still depends on model chi-score increase each time from the original unconstrained model. If the chi-score increase is statistically significant, you can infer the corresponding population parameters to be significantly different.